If you change your mind, you change your life, just change your mind. The Lord loves you. He's standing with his arms wide open for you. Oh, 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 oh. Be encouraged, cause this day's for you. Don't you let this opportunity pass by. Good morning and Merry Christmas to you. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Sunday of Uncovering Your Purpose. Today's session, Embracing Your Authenticity. I am excited to be with you on this holiday weekend. Check in, everybody. Where are you tuning in from? Let me see what state are you in? What hometown are you in? Are you visiting South Carolina with family? Are you in Texas? Are you in Alabama? Are you in Louisiana, Georgia, Florida, Washington State? Let us hear from you. Mississippi friends, where are you? Put in the comments where you're tuning in from. I'm so glad that you decided to tune into this broadcast. This is Changing Your Mind Ministries, where we teach life come get yours. I am Minister April Evans, and I could not be more ecstatic um, to be with you. I don't want to be anywhere else right now than to be right here with you so that we can uncover our purpose and embrace who God has created us to be. Guys, we have had now 10 weeks 10 weeks of uncovering our purpose and learning more about who God created us to be. We've been talking over the past 10 weeks about authenticity and I am becoming better because of you, because of God and because of doing the work. So we're going to get started and talk about, get started and talk more about this work. Talk more about what the Holy Spirit has been sharing with me. You know what we always do. We always start off with prayer. So if you can, will you pray for me and will you pray with me? Amen. Let us pray. God, I thank you so much for being such a great God. God, I thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, God, not only to die for us, God, but to be a demonstration for us, God, on what life looks like and should be like. So, God, I thank you, God, for your word, God, that truly is a light unto my feet. God, it gives me directions on where I should go, it gives me directions on how, on who I should be becoming. So God, I thank you, God, that your words really do, that your word really does have the answers to all of life's questions. So God, we have plenty of questions. God, I do. I have questions about my life. And God, I thank you that your, that your word, God, gives us the answers that we need. Holy Spirit, meet us where we are today. From my lips to my ears, give the people what they need, God. In your son Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in with me again. I am April Evans and I'm excited. Um, more than excited, I'm humble. I'm humble to be in front of you. And you know I come equipped and ready. <laughs> yes, I have my tissue ready because every time I get in front of this camera, guys, and I'm already ready to get started with the tears, the waterworks, I can't help it. I, I get excited about it and um, I get my heart and my feelings get so moved by the experience because every time I talk to you on this camera, I'm really, it's really like I am, uh, I guess, looking in a mirror at myself and I see um, progress. I see the progress that I'm making. I see where maybe I've had some missteps. I see where I've maybe missed God in some areas, but I also see how much God loves me to give me instructions so that I so that he can help me to redeem the time with my life. But not only that, God is equipping us. God is empowering us to live our best life. Now, I'm not trying to wait until I get to heaven to live. Mm -mm, I want to live right now. And part of me embracing my authenticity, part of me embracing that also means that I embrace God's instructions for my life. That way I can have that Zoe life. That way I can have the life that Christ died for me to have and live it right now. Live it in the midst of quarantine. Live it in the midst of tragedy. Live it in the midst of death. Live it in the midst of grief and brokenheartedness. I can still live that Zoe life that Christ died for me to have. And I am obsessed 
I'm absolutely obsessed with living that life now. So CYM, Change Your Mind Ministries, if you're out there, say hello to me. Let me know that you are in the building. I absolutely appreciate it. Put something in the comments. Again, wherever you are tuning in from, let me know where you're tuning in from and let me know if you had a great Christmas. I had a great Christmas and I hope that you guys had a great Christmas as well. But hey, we're going to get into uncovering our purpose. And we're going to do what we always do. And I'm going to make this session pretty brief as far as the review. We're going to go and review what we've been talking about over the past now 10 weeks. Guys, here we go. So our foundational scripture has been coming from Ephesians 4, 22, 22 through 24, where we talked about our former life before we got saved, before we gave our life to Christ. Um, we were taught um, as far as like it's that former way of life who we were before we accepted Christ. We were taught to take off that old way of thinking, take off that old way of doing stuff. Mm, that's no good for us now. But now we want to be renewed in our minds and the way that we think, the way that we analyze information. God says that now that we've accepted him, we're going to be renewed continually in our in the spirit of, my, of our minds. So what we need to do is take off the old self, take off the, co the corrupted, deceitful desires and to put on the new self. Embrace who God has created us to be. Right. And then that we will be in his righteousness and in true holiness. So we broke down what authenticity means and what it means to be authentic. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Authenticity, it means letting go of who it is that you think you are supposed to be and embracing who God created you to be. It's that simple. Letting go of other people's expectations of you, letting go of expectations you've even placed on yourself. Let go of all of that and embrace who God created you to be before the foundations of the world. So let's go ahead and go to week one. Week one, and we recap from week one and the following weeks. And week one, when God made you, we're going to go ahead and talk about that right now. When God made the real you, not the, not the you that you're showing up with, but when God made the real you before the foundations of this earth, he made that person right. Remember, we're not trying to make the imposter right. We're not trying to make the, the fake person right. The person that God created before the foundations of the world, the real you, that's the person that God made right. So that you, the one that we are uncovering, that person is whole, that person is complete. And remember, the first enemy that we have is not the church. The first enemy that we have, I said the first, the first enemy that we have is not the church. The first enemy that we have is not our family. The first enemy that we have is ourselves. Go back to week one. Week two. You don't have to compete or compare yourself with anybody else when you embrace the real you, okay? And you don't have to compartmentalize your life because when God made the real you, when God made the real me, he made us right. He made us right. Week three, it's enough to be who you really are. It's enough to be the person that God created and to get what you want. And self-examination is a necessity. And when we talk about self-examination, true self-examination is determining how close do I look like Christ in an area of my life? Not how close do I look like this person in this area of my life? Because remember, we don't compare ourselves to anybody else and we don't compete. Self-examination against the word of God, against the life of Christ is how we examine our lives. Week four. Be honest with God. Tell God how you really see it. Tell God how you really feel. Don't hide that from God. Be honest with him about how you feel about it, how you see a thing and embrace his truth. In exchange for your honesty, God is going to give you his truth. And we talked about the difference between truth and honesty in week number four. Week number five, people. That was one of our best weeks. And I think all of them were our best weeks. I think mean, we continue to build upon precept upon precept. But week five, we talked about the truth. And the truth personified is Jesus Christ. And what about the truth? The truth never changes. Nothing changes about the truth. The truth cleanses. It is going to wash you clean. And the truth is going to sting, guys. It's going to hurt. But the truth is going to lead you to life. Remember, Jesus Christ is the truth personified and he's going to lead you to life. What life? Your life. The life that you desperately want to have. The life that I want to have. Week six, 
We talked about wounds, right? Wounds, they limit your ability to choose. But remember, time does not heal all wounds. Time doesn't do that. Time buries wounds. Time suppresses wounds. But time does not heal wounds. Remember, the great physician is not time. The great physician is Jesus Christ. So take your wounds to him. And when we take our wounds to him, healing, healing is God's invitation. Healing is Jesus's invitation to bring your heart home. Oh, something about that just uh, just warms my soul. And then when we bring, when we accept God's invitation for healing, God is going to restore us. God is in the business of restoring you. God is in the business of restoring me. And we are being restored. Week seven. God's grace is sufficient for what? <laughs> for everything, for every pain, for every wound, for every broken heart, for every what if, and for, for every now. God's grace, God's willingness to come alongside you and I is sufficient for everything. Week eight, we went back to week one and we talked about when God made you, when God made the real you. God made that person right. That was on week eight. And then when we got to week nine, we did a recap of all the weeks. And I want to give a shout out to our, our amazing CYM media director, Miss Tina Fulton. She did a great job of pulling together some of the nuggets over the past nine weeks to recap what we've been talking about week over week over week. So guys, um, I stand on the shoulders of some amazing people who have who have actually paved the way for me to be where I am and teaching, um, having the honor of teaching the Bridge Adult Sunday School class for CYM. And I want to give honor first to Pastor Wendell Jones, who is the pastor of Change in Your Mind Ministries. He's coming up at 1015. So guys, stay tuned in. Oh, and share this. <laughs> Don't play. Don't play. Go ahead and share this to your timeline right now. Thank you. And I also have to honor the uh, the curriculum developer as as well as the teacher and the uh, the overseer if you want to call it the coordinator of the bridge and that is Minister Jemiah Battle. He has been teaching for us since since b before the pandemic all the way up through I think November and he laid down the foundational pieces that has made it easier for me to be able to stand on top of the teaching. So Minister Jemiah Battle. I honor you and I thank you for paving the way um, and giving us instructions up to this point. So thank you so much. Guys, let's talk about where we are. Where are we on this journey of embracing our authenticity? Now, don't, don't forget, authenticity means what? Go ahead and put that in the comments. Letting go of who it is that you think you are supposed to be. I'm letting go of who it is that I think I'm supposed to be too. And I'm embracing who God has created me to be. So I came equipped, <laughs> uh -huh. got my tissue ready because I like, like I said, being in front of this, being in front of this computer is like being in front of a mirror. And I've continued to ask myself over the past weeks, you know, God, what's next on this journey? Um, God, what do I need? What do I need to make note of to help me as I go through this healing and this embracing of the real me that you created. And I was, I've been talking to the Holy Spirit and I was like, you know what? If you're like me and you're tuning in, I'm submitting to the healing process, God. I'm trying to let go of the familiar. I'm trying to let go of these personalities that aren't serving me, God. I'm trying to let go of the lies that I've been holding on to for decades in my life. God, I'm trying to let go of these personalities that, that, don't, that, that don't serve me. God, I'm hurting. God, I'm grieving the loss. So God, now what? What do I need for this journey in my life? Ha! Huh. Because guys, it has been painful. I mean, I've had some great moments. God and I, we've been talking a lot and I think I've been getting closer to who it is that he created me to be and I'm getting closer to him and I'm starting to know God a whole lot differently and I praise God for that. But I'm like, God, now what? I'm hurting. And I need to know how to get over this hurdle in my life. I have a lot of fear. I have a lot of timidity because I don't know what's next. I don't know what's really certain in my life. And if you're like me, 
Maybe you've had some of the same questions. Maybe you've had some of the same emotions. And I want to share with you what God shared with me. For the next leg of this journey, God shared with me, he said, April, and I'm sharing this with you. As you are embracing more of who I created you to be, as you get through, as you accept my invitation for healing to bring your heart home, you are going to need increased faith. And you're also going to need increased vulnerability. Yeah, the Holy Spirit shared with me and I'm sharing with you. As you decide to accept God's healing invitation to bring your heart home, the place where you make those decisions, the place where you rank and prioritize, God says that you're going to need and I am going to need increased faith and increased vulnerability. So let's talk about it. Why faith? Faith. And I, and I start to think, OK, God, I, I think we all know what faith is. And and for those of you, you know, what did, can you put this in the comments? What is faith? What is faith? You know, and so why faith? You know, God told me that faith, it is absolutely required for letting go of the things that I'm clinging to because I am now releasing old patterns. I'm releasing old ways of thinking. I'm releasing old ways of doing things. I'm releasing lies because I've been clinging on to these things. And God has told me, continues to tell me that faith is going to be required in order for me to let go of these things that are not serving me. What is faith? Let's get back to it. I know some of you probably put down faith is the evidence of things, what? <laughs> right. But this is how I wanted to define faith. Faith is about going to the edge of what you know and taking one more step. Faith. It's about going to the edge, to the very, very edge of what you know, but then taking one more step beyond that. Hmm. It's that one step beyond what you know that gives you and that gives me increased access to life. It gives us increased access to freedom. And it's going to take faith to help you and me to move through the vulnerable times and the pain and to help us navigate through our emotions as we embrace who God has created us to be. As we let go of these old mindsets, as we let go of these ways of thinking, it is going to take faith to help us to move through these vulnerable times. And I know I keep saying that word vulnerable. Well, don't worry because I am going to talk a lot about vulnerability today. So get your pen and your pads out, pull out the notepads on your phone and let's get ready. Vulnerability, ah, that word scares me. Let's talk about being vulnerable. Remember, we just talked about faith. God says that for this next leg of our journey, we're gonna need increased faith and increased vulnerability. And remember, I just said faith is about going to the edge of what you know, what you already know, and then taking one more step. Now let's talk about vulnerability. Vulnerability is I am willing to let the real me be seen based on where I am. And at that place, based on where I am, I am willing to be deeply seen and deeply known. You guys get that? Vulnerability. I am willing to let the real me, the, the real me, that the, the person that God created, the you that God created, yeah. I'm willing to allow that person to be seen based on where I am right now. And at that place where I am right now, I'm willing to be deeply seen and known right now where I am. Let's talk about being vulnerable. Being vulnerable has been where I've been probably over the past four weeks for sure, for certain. Being vulnerable though is absolutely transformative and it is the beginning of true connection between people. Better yet, there is a true level, there is a level of vulnerability that comes when you have to truly learn how to live with yourself. 
<laughs> stay with me. When you have to learn to live with yourself first, there is a level of vulnerability that is required for you to even be able to do that. And then I have to learn how to live with other people. So I guess that's what me being vulnerable with myself first and acknowledging all the parts of me that I have tried to hide, all the parts of me that I've tried to suppress, all the parts of me that I've tried to bury, all the parts of me that I've tried to push away, when I am being vulnerable with myself, I'm also acknowledging all the parts of me that I don't like. So let's talk about vulnerability a little bit more as it relates to authenticity. Remember, when we talked about authenticity, we said that means embracing who it is that God created me to be. I'm letting go of other people's expectations of me, even the expectations that I placed on myself, right? But I'm also embracing who God created me to be. So vulnerability is about showing other showing others where you are. Authenticity is about showing others who you are. So if I'm going to be authentic, I'm going to show people who I am. And when I'm being vulnerable, I'm going to show you where I am. You get that? So let's talk about vulnerability because I have a love hate relationship with it, to be honest. So I love vulnerability and I fear it. And that's where I've been over the past couple of weeks, because this uncovering who God has created me to be has caused me a lot of fear, has caused me a lot of timidity. Um, and not only that, I've had some pain associated with it as well. Um, but, yeah, I have a love hate relationship with vulnerability. And if you are like me, I love to see people um, who display their raw truth. Um, I love it. We absolutely love it. But at the same time, we are afraid to let others see it in us. Like, I don't mind you giving me your raw truth. I don't mind you putting your life on display. Actually, I'm drawn to it. I'm engaged. I mean, I'm picking up the popcorn and I'm eating and I'm engaged with the rest of them. But I'm definitely afraid to let others see it in me. Vulnerability. It's a two edged sword, I think, that can cut both ways. Um, but I truly believe that it is only when we are our most vulnerable that we can experience the connection with God and others that we were built for. Mm. But it is also exactly when we are most vulnerable, showing others where we are, that we can get the most hurt. And I think that's where I've been. So let me share with you what being vulnerable is not. Being vulnerable is not just about being open. So we're going to go ahead and think, think of people who mostly say, oh, girl, oh, oh, bro, you can ask me anything. Or, oh, I'm an open book. I'm here to tell you that those statements do not draw me to people. And they don't make me want to take my clothes off and jump off in the truth of their pool with them either. They really don't. Because people can and people will be open about the facts of their lives and they'll be honest and they'll be open about the lives of others. Right. But that doesn't make them vulnerable. It doesn't make you vulnerable just because you're willing to tell me about the facts of your life. That doesn't make you vulnerable. It doesn't make me vulnerable either. Why? Because they don't expose themselves to the possibility of getting hurt. The real truth is that you, me, or anyone else isn't really being vulnerable at all if we don't or can't get hurt in the process. Openness, <laughs> when we say that we're being open, when we when we say we're being open and we just want to give you the facts of our lives and we're not and we're not going in knowing that we might have the possibility of getting hurt, it's just about getting attention. It's not about connecting with other people. And when you're being vulnerable, you have the ability to connect with other people. But we're going to break down what being vulnerable means. So Pastor Jones, he loves the study of words. He loves the etymology of words. And so because I am a student of this great teacher, I also love the etymology of words as well. So etymology, let's, meaning where did this word come from? Where was it derived from? The word vulnerable is actually derived from the Latin word. I think it means vulnus, V-U-L-N-U-S. And that word means wound, Jesus. And the Latin verb of that means to wound. 
So vulnerable, check this out, originally meant capable of being physically wounded or having the power to wound. So in other words, someone or something can be vulnerable to criticism or failure as well as to a literal wounding. You follow me? However, but there is another aspect of vulnerability that we're gonna talk about. And that means courageously opening yourself up to inspection. God told me and the Holy Spirit is saying the same thing to you. We need two things on the leg of this journey. We talked about wounds. We've talked about accepting God's healing invitation to bring our heart home. And we've talked about when God created the real us, he made the real us right. God said for this leg of the journey, you're going to need increased faith and you're going to need increased vulnerability, meaning you're going to need to courageously open yourself up more to inspection. Vulnerability is taking the risk to expose yourself emotionally. It feels uncertain, but there is no other path to the most meaningful experiences you will ever have in your life. Here's the deal. You and I, us, we were created for the purpose of connection to God, to ourselves and to other people. And the requirement for achieving that purpose is vulnerability. Courageously opening yourself up to inspection and taking the risk to expose ourselves emotionally. And here's the thing about being vulnerable. It cannot happen outside of relationships. For you to be you, for me to be me, for us to be the people that God created us to be, we need God and we need other people. So therefore vulnerability is required. So why am I struggling with exposing myself emotionally during this time of my life? Why am I afraid? Why am I timid? Why am I reluctant? Why am I hesitant? Why am I unwilling to open myself up to inspection. Well, let's go ahead and put the lies on the table. Let's go ahead and put the elephant in the room on blast. Because I've been taught from other people and just from my own life experiences that being vulnerable is a weakness. And because I have perceived it as a weakness, because I've been taught that being vulnerable is a weakness, I've been reluctant to be vulnerable in my relationships, even with God and even with myself. Here's the truth. It's true that being vulnerable can hurt you. It's the very definition of being vulnerable. Remember we said vulnerability in the true and Latin sense of the word means to wound. But getting hurt does not mean that you are weak. Getting hurt emotionally isn't the same as getting hurt physically. Physical hurt really can indicate a weak condition with compromised physical strength. But getting hurt emotionally can indicate the exact opposite. You follow me? It is actually through our painful emotional experiences that we get our life's greatest lessons. And there's nothing weak about that. Our most important insights, our most intimate connections with other people, and our most crucial skills that we have has come in some of the deepest emotional valleys that we have ever experienced, not during our mountaintop experiences. You follow me? Think about your mountaintop experiences and think about your emotional valleys. Where has some of your most important insights come from? Some of your greatest connections in life, where has it come from? Some of the most crucial skills that you have acquired, did it come from your mountaintop experiences or did it come from those deep emotional valleys? Let's go ahead and define vulnerability a little bit deeper. Vulnerability, what is it? It is the willingness to open yourself up so that others can see into your heart and into your life. That's scary, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, it's scary. Well, that's the point. 
The point of being vulnerable is to show up and be seen. And by being seen, I mean revealing the reality of what you have experienced, revealing the reality of what you are experiencing, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It means owning and acknowledging your failures. It means taking responsibility for your public and your private decisions. That's what I've had to do. That's what I'm continuing to do. It means normalizing your struggles in front of others, being vulnerable. I think every week that I've gotten in front of this computer, I've had people to inbox me, people to text me, people to message me and say, April, I appreciate you sharing your struggle. I appreciate you normalizing what you're going through. I appreciate you making yourself vulnerable. But for the most of us, showing up and being seen is just about looking the part. That's not being vulnerable. Being vulnerable means about what? Revealing the reality of what I'm experiencing, of what you're experiencing right now in your life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And owning, yeah, owning and acknowledging your failures, taking responsibility for your public and your private decisions, and normalizing your struggles in front of others, in front of other people. It's not just about showing up and looking like the part. So I had to get get some word, God. I had to be like, okay, but I need some word. I need a demonstration of what vulnerability looks like because me just feeling it just ain't just ain't working for me. So of course, Jesus. Okay. So Jesus was, I think to me, was a complete expression of a vulnerability and, and perfect authenticity. So because Christ was willing to show up and be seen in this world in the likeness of flesh. Oh, scripture, Romans 8 and 3. What does it say? For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sinful offering. Check this out. In the Bible, we see Jesus, right? And if you look in the Gospels, Jesus was tired. Jesus was hungry. Jesus got angry. Jesus was gentle. Jesus was meek. Jesus was afraid. Jesus was compassionate. Jesus got upset and Jesus got so many other things, but he never pretended to be one thing when he felt another. That's vulnerability. He was a servant and a son. And there was not one word that he spoke, nor one action that took place where he was incongruent, where he was misaligned with his nature. He never hid what he believed, even though he even though he may have felt a certain way. That is authenticity. So not only that, let's take a look at some of the men and women of the Bible. Yep, because I had to like God, you got to bring the arsenal out for me because I need some help with being vulnerable on this leg of my journey. So all four of the Gospels, the book of Acts, they talk about and they record some of the great failures of, of some of the most purposeful people um, in the Bible that we've read about. Like in Romans, Paul, Paul talks about his personal struggles with sin in chapter seven. He talks about his weakness and suffering in the letters to Corinth. He talks about um his trials in the flesh in Galatians and Ephesians. Paul talks about tribulations, tribulations and Philippians. Paul is in chains and Colossians. Um, he talks about his afflictions in Christ. And then we get to Thessalonians. He's talking about the hindering of, of the enemy the of Satan. But and then in Timothy, he talks about he's the chiefest of all sinners. Ugh. But then even when we get to Titus, Paul talks about being disobedient. He talks about being de deceived. Um, and then even when we talk about James, let's not even leave out James, right? James tells us to confess our faults to one another. And I'm assuming that James was not perfect because I know he wasn't. And I'm assuming that he practiced what he preached. And Peter, let's talk about Peter. Peter was even willing to admit that he found some of Paul's letters hard to understand. And let's talk about John. John said that if we say that we have not sinned, that we're lying. He was certainly being real. But these are all examples of vulnerability, being real about where they were in their life. Mm, being real about where they were. People of God, these people were being open. They were being real. 
and they were being honest before other people about where they were. So now here's the question for you and I. Do we ever talk about ourselves in the same terms? Are we ever open? Are we ever real? And are we ever honest before other people about where we really are? Hmm. James says, therefore, confess your sins, confess your faults, confess where you've missed God to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. That's James 5, 16. And in Proverbs, we're also encouraged to be transparent and not hide our sins and our weakness. It says, whoever conceals his transgressions, his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Vulnerability cannot happen outside of relationships. Remember, for you to be you, for me to be me, we need God and we need others. So if the word of God is instructing you and if the word of God is instructing me to do this and Jesus himself was an example of how to be vulnerable, why don't I feel any better about it? Relationships. I want to avoid the pain of relationships because I have to have a willingness to open myself up so that others can see into my life. And that can be painful. And because people are fickle, that includes me too, we all are, I don't want to open myself up to relationships because I know that I might and I know that I will get hurt. Avoiding physical pain is a good thing. Avoiding emotional pain, probably not so much. Jesus said in Matthew 10 and 38, whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And he wasn't kidding. And this wasn't just a metaphor for Jesus either, because he really did end up dragging his own cross to his own crucifixion. But Jesus taught us a lot about joy. Jesus taught us a lot about love. But Jesus never taught his followers to avoid pain. Not once did I hear Jesus talk about avoiding pain in the Bible. Actually, quite the opposite. To Jesus, I believe vulnerability was certainly not a weakness, but actually a sign of spiritual strength. So another lie we're going to stop eating is that having emotional needs makes me needy. Because remember, in order for us to be vulnerable, we're, we're allowing ourselves to be opened up emotionally in front of other people. So remember, being vulnerable lets others know that you don't have it all together. It lets others know that I'm willing to submit to the process of sanctification. And when we believe that having an emotional need makes us needy, that if we believe that lie, then what we will start to believe is that we don't owe or we don't need anyone else for anything. We won't own where we are. We won't own that we're broken. We won't own that we're hurting. And we'll say things to people like, I can't make you feel anything. And if you're angry, that's your problem. We're talking about emotional needs. Vulnerability, again, is taking the risk to expose yourself emotionally. So the best verse, to be the best version of you, you need other people. And if you hurt other people, you should feel bad about that because we have a God responsibility to other people and we need an emotional connection to them to be spiritually healthy. Healthy. So I'm not saying that every time you hurt someone's feelings, um, that it's your fault, but I am saying that it is in your best interest and in my best interest to care about it. We are made by God for relationship with him and for other people. Do you get that? And having emotional needs doesn't make you needy, but it does make you human. Rather than pretend that you don't have needs, you should try to uncover what those needs are so you can find a way to share them with others in ways that connect you to them. Needs are not something to be ashamed of. Both your needs and the needs of those you love are the substance of some of your most important relationships. So when I talk about vulnerability, I'm talking about being vulnerable to feelings. And I haven't wanted to feel over these past few weeks. 
it's hurt too bad. I haven't wanted to feel the pain. I haven't wanted to feel the fear. I haven't wanted to feel the brokenheartedness. I haven't wanted to feel any of that. But feelings are what create connection. And feelings are what we fear when we think about being vulnerable. So when a situation arises and you have to be vulnerable, ask yourself, what am I afraid of? Why am I afraid to take this next step? If the answer is your feelings, then you've just acknowledged that you fear being vulnerable. You're going to feel some things and it's going to be uncomfortable, but you're gonna to have to learn and I'm learning how to deal with the discomfort, but that discomfort is making me a better person. Vulnerability is hard. It takes courage and it takes boldness. And again, vulnerability is the beginning of connection, true connection between people. Does that make sense? Let me bring it on home for you. And first, John, we're told that God is love, right? And in God, we have a father, we have a son, and we have the Holy Spirit. Okay, so in those three people, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, there has to be a level of vulnerability even between those three. Yeah, there has to be a loving relationship, vulnerability, and connection. God did not just create this world, but God loved this world with an abandon that leaves God vulnerable to pain. God created the Garden of Eden, and Adam and Eve betrayed God's trust, which created, <laughs> right, which left God vulnerable to pain. God rescued Israel from oppression and slavery in Egypt. And the first thing they do is build a golden calf to worship God being vulnerable to pain. And yet, despite all the ways that we reject God, God continues to make himself vulnerable to us and continues to love us. Does that make sense? So what does true power look like? True power looks like being vulnerable. We can only be vulnerable with each other first because God made himself vulnerable to us. So what does this mean? Being vulnerable with ourselves and acknowledging all the parts that we're trying to hide. And I think for many of us, that's the hardest part. But that is really the only way that we can give our whole selves to God. The good part about all of this is that God knows all of our faults. God knows all of our mistakes. God knows all of our worries and God knows all of our pain. And if we come to God with our whole selves and when we do, God is not going to reject us. Perfect segue for me to offer you a relationship with him. Do you wanna give your life to Christ? Maybe you're at a place in your life where you're trying to embrace who God created you to be. Or maybe you're saying, you know what, God, I don't like who I'm becoming. I don't like where I am and I need to be rescued. Yeah, let's first start with being vulnerable to God. And if you would like for, for God to be your Lord, to be your savior, your teacher, your ruler, the person that rescues you, the person that instructs you, the person that gets you back to life. Salvation is yours. A relationship with him is yours. So I'm offering you salvation. And if you accept this relationship with Jesus Christ, this is the best eternal decision you could ever make. So we make it easy for you at Changing Your Mind Ministries. I'm simply going to ask that you repeat this after me. Yeah. I'm asking you to repeat Romans 10 and 9 after me. Here we go. Father, your word says that if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, I will be saved. God, I have done that. Holy Spirit, thank you for being my instructor. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading me into truth about me and about you. I accept this invitation for healing. I accept 
this invitation for life. In your son, Jesus' name, amen. CYM, we're being vulnerable this week. We're going to talk a little bit more about vulnerability and faith next week. But I appreciate you for tuning in and giving me 45 minutes of your time. Pastor Winter Jones is coming up at 1015. Hope that you guys stay tuned in. And until next time, I'll see you next Sunday.